Welcome back to Cinemation. Today we go over the movie Parasite, a comedy horror thriller from 2019. Beware of spoiler. We see Kai Woo Kim, a young man from a poor family, on his phone in his apartment in the slums of a South Korean city. He calls to his sister, Kai Jong, to tell her that the neighbor whose internet they use has put a password on the network. Kai Tik goes to Kai Woo and tells him to hold the phone up to the ceiling and search everywhere in the apartment for the Wi-Fi. Kai Woo finds a signal in the bathroom. Later, we see the whole family folding pizza of boxes together. Kai Wu shows his family members a video online of a woman folding the boxes extra fast and suggests they all try to keep up with her. Suddenly, they spot someone outside fumigating the streets and Kai Teek tells them to keep the window open so they get free fumigation. Smoke pours in the window and they all cough but Kai Teek continues folding the pizza boxes. That night, the family drinks beer at the table and Kai Teek expresses his gratitude for the Wi-Fi in the apartment. They suddenly notice a man urinating outside the apartment and argue about how to deal with it. In the middle of this, one of Kai Wu's friends, Min Hayek, a college student, rides up on a motorbike and yells at the drunk man. He visits the Kim family and gives them a rock that his grandfather told him to bring. It is meant to bring wealth. Min Hayek and Kai Wu go out for a drink, and Min Hayek comments on the fact that Kai Wu's parents look healthy. Kai Wu talks about how poor his family is, when Min Hayek suddenly shows him a picture of the high school sophomore he tutors, and tells him he should take over as her tutor while he goes abroad. Min Hayek tells him he is planning to ask her out once she enters college. Kai Wu doubts his abilities, but Min Hayek reminds him that while he was serving in the military, Kai Wu took the entrance exam many times and is a much better student than all the drunken college students he knows. Min Hayek assures Kai Wu that it will be no problem getting him the job since he will recommend him. And since the mother of the family is simple, Kai Wu enlists the help of his sister, Kai Jung, to help him make a resume with a college logo on it. When they show it to Kai Teek, he says, does Oxford have a major in document forgery. Kai Jong would be top of her class. As Kai Wu leaves, Kai Teek tells him he's proud of him. Kai Wu tells him he does not think of the forgery as a crime since he plans to go to the university in the next year. Kai Wu goes to the house of the family for whom he is interviewing. The housekeeper, Moon Kwang, opens the door and Kai Wu wanders into the large property. He looks at what is on the wall while Moon Kwang goes to get Mrs. Park. There is a family photo, a magazine with Mr. Park on the cover, and an innovation award that Mr. Park received. Suddenly, he looks out the window to see Moon Kwang wake waking up Mrs. Park, who has fallen asleep at a small table in the yard. Mrs. Park comes in and tells him that she is not very interested in his resume, since she is so impressed with Min Hayek and Kai Wu comes with his recommendation. Mrs. Park asks to sit in on Kai Wu's first lesson with Da Hai, and they go upstairs. In Da Hai's room, Kai Wu conducts a lesson, picking up her arm at one point and feeling her pulse as a way of flirting with her. He tells her that she needs vigor in order to dominate her exam work. At the end, Mrs. Park hires him and pays him well for his session, adding a little for inflation. Moon Quang plays with the Mrs. Park's son, while Mrs. Park laughingly tells Kai Wu that her son is eccentric and has a short attention span. She tells him that she enrolled Da Song in Cub Scouts, but it's made him even more poorly behaved, blaming it on the figure of the American Indian. Kai Wu lies that he was a Cub Scout. As she walks him out of the house, Mrs. Park talks about the fact that they have been unable to find a good art teacher. Struck with inspiration, Kai Wu tells Mrs. Park that he knows someone, Jessica, a friend of his cousin's, who studied art at Illinois State University and who might be perfectly suited to tutoring Da Song. He tells her that Jessica could help Da Song get into a good art school, and Mrs. Park becomes eager to meet her. The scene shifts and we see Kai Wu bringing his sister, Kai Jong, to the park residence. Before they enter, they sing a little song reminding Kai Jong how to remember the biographical details of her character, Jessica. Kai Wu goes up to Da Hai's room, where she tells him that Da Song is faking his genius. She talks about the fact that sometimes Da Song stares at the sky, as if struck by inspiration, and that it is all an act. She then asks Kai Wu if Jessica is his girlfriend. Kai Wu laughs and tells Da Hai that he is not interested in Jessica at all, and compliments her looks. They kiss, awkwardly, before getting back to the work. Moon Quang brings Kai Jong up to meet Da Song and tells her that he has trouble sitting still. In his room, Kai Jong tells her that she must leave them alone, as she never teaches with a parent in the room. Downstairs, Moon Quang offers the anxious Mrs. Park some plum extract with honey to calm her down. We see Moon Quang go downstairs to a pantry area to get the plum extract and Mrs. Park follows her down, instructing her to bring plum extract to Da Song's room in order to spy on what's going on in the lesson. When they come back upstairs, Kai Jong and Da Song are sitting at the table, and Da Song is attentive and obedient, bowing when Kai Jong dismisses him. 
As Mrs. Park sits to look at Da Song's drawing, Kai Jung sends Moon Quang away decisively. They examine Da Song's drawing and Kai Jung tells Mrs. Park that she studies art therapy before asking if anything happened to Da Song in first grade. Mrs. Park gasps as Kai Jung tells her that in order to decide whether she will work for them, she must know. She then points out that the lower right corner of a painting is known as the schizophrenia zone and points to this area in Da Song's drawing. There is a strange shape in the corner and also in the lower right corner in the drawing that is hanging on the wall. Kai Jung encourages Mrs. Park to compose herself and tells her that in order to get a window into Da Song's psyche, she will need to work with Da Song for four sessions a week, two hours each, and at a higher rate, one that reflects her work as an art therapist. Mrs. Park wholeheartedly agrees. As Mr. Park arrives home, Mrs. Park introduces him to Jessica from Illinois and asks his driver to bring her home. In the car, the driver asks Kai Jong if he should bring her all the way home, and she tells him to drop her off at the station. He pushes it a little, clearly wanting to bring her home, and she lies abruptly, telling him that she's meeting her boyfriend. As they near the station, Kai Jong takes off her underwear and leaves it in the car. At a food hall later, Kai Jong asks her father if he drove many Mercedes Benzes when he was a driver. He tells her he was not a driver, but a valet, and Kai Jong tells Kai Wu that she planted a trap in the car in order to get the driver fired and start the next step in their plan. The scene shifts and we see Mr. Park in the backseat of his car, finding the panties that Kai Jong left. He brings them home, where his wife is sleeping on the couch. She awakens and he shows her the panties. They are completely repulsed by the thought that not only did the driver have sex in the car, but that he had sex in the backseat, where Mr. Park sits. Mr. Park then points out that the most suspicious element of the whole thing is that the woman left her panties, and not something else, which would suggest that she is a drug addict. They try and devise a way to discreetly let him go, as Kai Jong listens nearby. As Mrs. Park walks Kai Jong out that night, she asks her if anything strange happened when the driver brought her home. Kai Jong says he was very nice, but insisted on taking her home. Mrs. Park is appalled and tells Kai Jong that they are firing him. Kai Jong suggests that they might have better luck with an older driver, and tells her that her uncle had a good driver once, named Mr. Kim. Mrs. Park is eager to meet him. We see Kai Teek sitting in a test vehicle at a showroom with Kai Wu, figuring out how a Mercedes Benz works. We then see Kai Teek visiting Mr. Park at his office for an interview. In the car, Mr. Park holds a cup of coffee to test the smoothness of Kai Teek's driving and the men chat about how Kai Teek has been driving for almost 30 years. Kai Teek flatters Mr. Park's status as the head of his household and suggests that they will make good companions. The family discusses Moon Quang and the fact that she feels very entitled, having lived in the house even longer than the Parks as housekeeper for the previous owner. As Kai Wu tutors Da Hai, she tells him that she wants to eat peaches, which are her favorite, but that they are forbidden in their household because Moon Quang has a horrible allergy. We see Kai Jong leaving the house with a peach and shaving its fuzz. We then see Kai Wu flicking the peach fuzz onto Moon Quang's neck as he leaves the house, triggering an allergic reaction. Moon Quang goes to the hospital to treat her symptoms. Kai Teek follows her there and takes a selfie with her in the background, which he later shows to Mrs. Park, asking her if it is the housekeeper. He tells her that Moon Quang has active tuberculosis, and Mrs. Park is horrified. This scene is interspersed with scenes of Kai Teek practicing this pre-written monologue at home, directed by Kai Wu. As Kai Teek tells Mrs. Park about Moon Quang's condition, she is horrified. He texts Kai Jong to tell her that they are three minutes away, and she goes downstairs to spread some peach fuzz on Moon Quang's neck once again. Moon Quang breaks out in another rash and starts coughing uncontrollably just as Mrs. Park comes into the house. Kai Teek takes some hot sauce, unseen by Mrs. Park, and sprays it on the tissue Moon Quang just put in the trash to make it look like blood. Mrs. Park has a private meeting with Kai Teek, in which she asks him not to mention any of what has happened to her husband. Kai Teek tells her that he does not have anything against Moon Quang and does not want her to know that he heard about her tuberculosis. Mrs. Park assures him that she will be discreet and make up an excuse for firing her, as she did with the driver. Mr. Park asks Kai Teek if he knows a good ribs restaurant nearby, citing the fact that Moon Quang made such good ribs. He is usped because of the sudden leave of their housekeeper, bemoaning the fact that she was such a good housekeeper, primarily because she never crossed the line. Kai Teek hands Mr. Park a card for a housekeeping service called The Care and asks Mr. Park if he loves his wife. Mr. Park laughs indignantly and tells him that he does. Kai Teek tells Mr. Park that The Care offered him a job, but that he turned it
handed down to work for the parks. Kai Teek tells Mr. Park he can give the card to his wife and tell her that he found the company himself. Kai Jong pretends to be the administrator at the care and asks Mrs. Park over the phone for a number of formal documents. Soon enough, Chung Sook is working as the housekeeper, bringing fruit to her two children, the tutors. In the middle of Da Song's session, Mr. Park arrives home with gifts, including walkie-talkies. While looking at the gifts, Da Song observes that Chung Sook and Kai Teek smell alike, and when Mrs. Park sends him back up to Jessica, he says that she smells that way too. At home, the Kims discuss the fact that they will have to use different soaps, detergents, and fabric softeners from one another. Kai Jong suggests that what they should really do is leave the semi-basement, which is creating the smell. Kai Teek observes that, Given the state of the job market, they are lucky to all be employed and to be worrying about the small issues they are worrying about. The Kim family enjoys their massive increase of income, and when the Park family decides to leave to go camping for Da Song's birthday weekend, they take the opportunity to stay in the huge park house for the weekend. They spend the evening drinking and eating and making a mess of the place when the doorbell rings. It's Moon Quang. She claims she was fired so quickly she left without being able to get something and just wants it back. Mrs. Kim reluctantly lets her in, and Moon Quang runs into the basement and begins screaming, opening a secret passage behind some shelves. She goes to her husband, Jun Se, who has secretly been living in the bunker ever since the previous owner moved out in order to hide from loan sharks. She gives him food while Mrs. Kim looks on in horror. She tells Moon Quang she needs to leave, and as Moon Quang begs her to let them stay, the rest of the Kim family falls off the stairs and into view, and they call each other dad, etc., which Moon Quang films on her phone, realizing the con the family has pulled. She threatens to send it to the Park family and uses that so she and her husband can force the Kim family to do their bidding. The Kim family manages to get the upper hand on them, getting them into the secret bunker. But the Park family calls. They've canceled their camping trip due to rain and will be home in eight minutes. The Kims scramble, trying to clean up as much mess as they can. Keeping the other two in the basement, they manage to do a good enough job that the rest of the family is able to hide while Mrs. Kim gives the Parks their dinner. When Moon Quang breaks out and runs upstairs, Mrs. Kim shoves her back down the stairs, where she hits her head and is severely wounded. Moon Quang and Jun Sae are locked in the bunker. Mr. and Mrs. Park end up sleeping in the living room in order to keep an eye on Da Song who is camping out in the backyard, forcing the Kims to stay under the table, frozen all night, even as the Parks complain about Mr. Kim's smell, and then later have sex. Eventually, in the dead of night, they are able to sneak out. They return home to find their apartment completely flooded with rain and sewage. Kai Wu takes the rock, and the family sleeps in a shelter for the night. The next day, Mrs. Park decides to throw an impromptu party for Da Song. The Kim family, in their roles as help, are invited and have to pretend that they don't know that there are two people locked in a bunker under the house. Kai Wu takes the rock down into the bunker, where Moon Quang has died and is ambushed by Jun Se, who bludgeons him in the head with the rock. He then enters the party, where he stabs Kai Jong in the chest. The party explodes into horror, and Da Song has a seizure. Jun Se was the ghost he had seen in the house prior. Mr. Park screams at his driver. Mr. Kim, who is trying to stop Kai Jong's bleeding, for the car keys to take his son to the hospital, and he throws them to him. They land under Jun Sae, who is fighting with Mrs. Kim. She manages to kill him by stabbing him with a meat skewer. Mr. Park gets the keys but expresses disgust at Jun Sae's smell. This triggers Mr. Kim, who snaps and stabs Mr. Park killing him. Mrs. Park faints as Mr. Kim flees. Kai Wu wakes up in the hospital, where he had been in a coma for weeks. He finds out that Kai Jong has died, and he and Mrs. Kim are sentenced to probation. There has been no sign of Mr. Kim, even though the police have been searching for him for Mr. Park's murder far and wide. Kai Wu leaves the rock in a river and observes the former park house where he sees the lights flickering. Kai Wu translates the flickering from Morse code, and learns Mr. Kim is controlling them from inside the bunker, where he is now living, sneaking upstairs for food from the new owners. Kai Wu writes his father a letter back, resolving that someday he will become wealthy enough that he can buy the house and their family can be reunited.